Welcome back to Gatabud. I wanted to make a talking head-ish video about the state of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. It was announced about six months ago in an interview that there was not going to be DLC. And for a while, I did not believe them. And based on news since then, or really lack thereof, I'm now starting to believe them, and I want to express my thoughts on this, why they made this peculiar decision, and what is possibly coming next. So let's just get started with why I am disappointed. Um, Master Mode is sorely needed in Tears of the Kingdom. I am more of an advanced player. I like to be pushed. And in its current state, Tears of the Kingdom is just too easy to finish. And for the average player or beginner playing on this easier difficulty, that's great because the story of Zelda and the enjoyment of Zelda should be accessible to everyone. And the main mission of this channel is to help facilitate that and get you over the hump on the things that you were having trouble with and be able to accomplish it all at your own pace on the easier difficulty first. I, however, am a veteran of the series and I really needed Master Mode kind of right out of the gate. I was hoping that they'd just give it to us and not make us wait, but that's fine. So we didn't get it. And additionally, the Master Trials of Breath of the Wild, and let's rewind. The Master Trials and Master Mode came in DLC 1 of Breath of the Wild, in case you are unfamiliar. And what that entailed was a far more difficult game and the most intense battles ever in the history of the Zelda series on a tower floor by floor type setup to make your master sword glow all the time and you can tell i'm on master mode by the little triforce icon in the bottom left of the screen i completed the master trials on master mode it's one of the most difficult things i've ever done in any game and is one of the most rewarding things i've ever done in any game i was so much looking forward to doing that again and I felt like the Proving Ground Shrines were a preview of what was to come in the Master Trial 2.0 in Tears of the Kingdom. So, based on how much fun we had doing those Proving Ground Shrines, I was very excited for that. And it's a shame that we are not going to see that. So, after completing the Master Trials, you have a fully powered Master Sword at 60 energy all the time in Breath of the Wild. It's amazing, and more importantly, its durability skyrockets, and it takes forever to break. It's still not the best weapon in the game, but it's close enough. Additionally, in Master Mode, the enemies are extremely powerful, and... It basically requires you to four-star every armor in the game, which was the whole point of the four-star armor series for Tears of the Kingdom that I developed. If you really wanted to push your limits, you would equip this set, use triple attack food, get the ancient proficiency bonus as well, and then use a weapon like this, and that would far outclass the Master Sword. And to beat the biggest stuff in the game, this is what it took. It's a shame that we won't get that in Tears of the Kingdom. Now, where do we go from here? I do believe them now that we are not getting DLC for Tears of the Kingdom on the Switch. And one of the reasons could possibly be that this game is so extreme that it pushed the Switch to its absolute limits and they had to scale back some things. I saw evidence of that when I was doing my spawn mechanic testing and if you compare how like key spawns worked in Breath of the Wild 
versus Tears of the Kingdom. I broke that down in depth. I believe they have to do some significant throttling and limit the amount of enemies that spawn around you at all times just to keep the game from crashing. I think that it is possible that adding the DLC in any form is just beyond the capabilities of the Switch, and that's why they did it. I more than likely believe, though, that the reason that they were told no DLC is because the worst kept secret in the gaming industry right now, the existence of the Nintendo Switch 2, we have all but confirmed it from numerous outlets. It exists, it's in development, it has been in development for quite a while, and it looks like it will be coming in the next year or two, at least an announcement. Okay, so Nintendo is going to want a Grand Slam release title, and I think that they were pressured by the top to make sure that a new Zelda game comes out when Switch 2 comes out, just like Breath of the Wild did for Switch 1. Now, this could be one of two things. It could be an entirely new game that we haven't seen, I'm a little skeptical because of how long it took uh, for Tears of the Kingdom to come out after Breath of the Wild. It took, I believe, seven years. And even if the rumors of it being in quote-unquote polish and QA for a year before it came out are accurate, that would put us at best case scenario two to three years into development of this game. And we are about two years out. So they would have to pull this off in five years. And with the way that the scope of games keeps growing over time, I question if they're going to pull that off. The second possibility is that we actually get a definitive edition of Tears of the Kingdom enhanced and ready to go for Switch 2. And I actually think that that might actually be the more logical and likely thing. And I think that would include the things like the Master Trials and Master Mode and all the stuff that we wish that we had gotten on top of the game that we already got, which I'm not complaining. Tears of the Kingdom was an absolute masterpiece. I just wanted to be pushed a little further as a gamer. So based on what I know as a software engineer and how these things work in the business realm, this is what I think is going on. One of those two things. If I were the director of Zelda, I would actually turn this into a trilogy personally. If I had to develop a new game and Enhancing Tears of the Kingdom was completely off the cards and it was out of my hands. Decision from the top. I would make a somewhat dystopian third entry in this game where the long forgotten Triforce that has been all but absent in these two titles has been rediscovered down in the depths, either the depths was what used to be the sacred realm or the sacred realm is even below those depths. And the various factions of the game become stricken by greed and wage war with one another to try to secure the Triforce. And a much older and probably married Link and Zelda ruling as king and queen of Hyrule have to reunify all the tribes and a deeper threat emerges, which does that purpose, the long-absent demise, which I honestly thought there was a good chance we were going to be getting him in Tears of the Kingdom. So you bring back Demise, he's reawakened, he's got to be defeated once and for all for good to completely tie up the Ganondorf reincarnation storyline, which Tears of the Kingdom didn't necessarily tie up either. We just redefeated the original one so it wasn't a reincarnation we know he's going to keep coming back the way to do it is to defeat demise once and for all which Gandorf is the reincarnation of so a little bit of kind of a i guess departure from kind of what we're used to where we get you know just something new and fresh i don't know how like goran versus zora 
warfare would look like. Um, that would be somebody higher up than me to decide. But that's just kind of what I would do personally. I think that would be an interesting game. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think the next Zelda game should look for. I'm still holding out hope, though, that we get our massive Proving Ground style master trial for Tears of the Kingdom in a Switch 2 re-release. Honestly, that's what I would like. That's what I think is going to happen. I hope it's going to happen. I have absolutely no sources to back that up. That's just my personal theory as a software engineer that understands how this business works and what could possibly be going on. We've seen Bethesda do this with Skyrim for three console generations now. Who's to say that Tears of the Kingdom won't last at least one more generation? So those are my thoughts. Um, let me know below. What are your thoughts? Are you sad that there's no DLC? I sure am. Let me know. And lastly, I just wanted to say that I did not finish the four star armor series i had at least two more videos planned and they were halfway done snow quill and rubber and i just kind of got caught up in some other things and based on my defense testing i realized that ganondorf the i guess pinnacle of the game only needs 24 defense to floor his damage to one heart per hit that is the equivalent of being naked and eating triple defense food. So going to the effort to four star a lot of these kind of niche sets started to really lose its luster once I came to that realization. Um, obviously there's, you know, battling things like Lionels in extreme environments, but the Gleox were the main justification of that and they just weren't that difficult for me personally at least so i can certainly finish those if you were looking forward to snow quill and rubber they're already halfway done i just need to hunker down and get it done uh i'm just a busy overworked dad so that's that's the reason why it didn't get done but i'm happy to do that comment below if you actually were looking forward to that and i'm happy to deliver that for you Otherwise, one last thought, I would love to see Twilight Princess and Wind Waker make a comeback on the Switch. If that happens, I will gladly do a playthrough with you all, and I would very much enjoy that. So until next time, my friends, whatever comes next with Zelda, I'm here to play with you. I can't wait. And until next time, let's play some other games that I am going through.